Hi everyone, welcome back. The learning goal for this video is for you to be able to draw the Lewis structures for molecular compounds or polyatomic ions. So what is a Lewis structure? Well, a molecule is represented by a Lewis structure in which all of the valence, the electrons of all the atoms are arranged to give octets. So what we'll learn is to be able to draw the Lewis structure for methane, which is CH4, ammonia, NH3, water, H2O, just to name a couple of examples there. Let's start with the simplest molecule, hydrogen. So hydrogen forms um, as a diatomic molecule as the atoms move closer and the positive charge of the nucleus attracts the electron of the other atom. Remember in a previous video, I mentioned that one of the big rules for chemistry is that opposites are attracted to each other. This hydrogen diatomic molecule has a shared pair of electrons. And this is what's called a covalent bond. And the reason why it wants to make these, you know, this covalent bond is to give the molecule a noble gas arrangement, just like helium, but to both of the hydrogen atoms. So it's, it's trying to achieve stability here. And it forms when the molecule, um, and the reason why it forms is when the molecule forms, it's more stable, once again, achieving stability than the two individual hydrogen atoms by themselves. So let's look at a diagram here. So at first, each hydrogen has only one valence electron. They're far apart at this point. In the graph, we have energy increases, so they're high in energy here. And then on the x-axis, we have distance between the nuclei as it decreases. So the nuclei of each of these atoms. So now they're getting closer. Notice how it's lowering in energy. They're attracted to each other. And to achieve helium's noble gas configuration, they would need to each have two electrons. And the only way they're gonna do that is if they share two, those two electrons with each other. So this gives them that noble gas configuration of helium. It helps them become more stable. And so when we find hydrogen in our environment, it always exists as this diatomic molecule, H2, as opposed to just these single hydrogen atoms floating around. So a molecule is represented by a Lewis structure in which the valence electrons of all the atoms are arranged to give octets. Like your goal is to give every atom an octet, excluding hydrogen. Hydrogen can only hold two electrons. And I'll keep reminding you of that as we work examples together. Now, once a molecule forms and we draw its Lewis structure, shared electrons or bonding pairs are shown as a single line. Sometimes you'll see them as two dots, but I prefer you to show bonding pairs as single lines. <clears throat> so that's these. And understand that each of these lines represents two electrons each. So each line is two electrons. We have one, two, three, four, five, six electrons that are bonding or shared electrons. Now we will also have non-bonding electrons or lone pairs, and they're always placed on the outside of the atoms. And so in this case for ammonia NH3, this non-bonding pair or lone pair of electrons is on um, the outside of the atom. You never wanna put a lone pair and a bonding pair on the same side. So treat nitrogen as having four sides, same with any element and spread everything out. So if we look at another example here, we have fluorine. 
And fluorine on its own has seven valence electrons. It only needs one more electron, right? But if two fluorine atoms find each other, they can share their electrons just like hydrogen did to form a bonding pair, which we will represent as a line. That bonding pair of electrons is a covalent bond. And then everything on the outside are lone pairs or non-bonding electrons. So this is the Lewis structure for fluorine, F2. And now each fluorine has an octet. That's its goal, right? So it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this fluorine has eight electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now this fluorine has eight electrons. So they're both happy. And the reason why the molecule formed is that it's more stable than its starting material. Now, as a result, some elements exist as diatomic molecules in nature because they're more stable that way. The seven diatomic molecules in nature are hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Now there's some patterns you'll recognize as you practice through some of these problems and drawing Lewis structures, which is going to be a core chemistry skill. So I wanna go over some of these patterns, but no need to memorize them. I have guidelines for drawing Lewis structures. Um, that you'll follow, which will help you predict without even thinking about different patterns or guessing. But for example, hydrogen only forms one bond. So if you draw a Lewis structure and you see two bonds to hydrogen, that should indicate to you like, oh, that feels wrong, that is wrong, um, because hydrogen only can form one bond. So it doesn't ever have an octet. Same with boron. Boron's a unique element. It only forms three bonds. Carbon does have an octet. It will have four bonds. So does silicon. Nitrogen, because it's in group 5A, is only three away from the noble gas, so it forms three bonds. Same thing with like group uh, carbon, which is in group 14 or 4A. Only four away, so it forms four bonds. So you see that pattern there. Oxygen sulfur group 16, only two away from a noble gas, so it usually forms two bonds. And then halogens in group 17, like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine, are only one away from a noble gas, so they'll only form one bond. So you don't wanna give those halogens any more than one bond. So I wanted to go through a guideline to drawing electron dot formulas or Lewis structures. That's another way to call it. And I'm gonna go through the example of ozone as we go through the rules together. So ozone is O3. So if you've ever heard of the ozone layer, it has O3 in it. So we are gonna derive the Lewis structure together for ozone. So it's important when you're following these rules that you follow them in order and you don't um, skip a step without actually reading through it and making sure it's okay to move on, okay? So don't go out of order here um, in terms of the rules. If you follow these guidelines, you will be okay with drawing Lewis structures. It takes the guesswork out of it. Um, I find that sometimes students, if they're trying to just find shortcuts, they'll make more mistakes. And so please, follow these guidelines, follow these rules, and then in that way you can be confident in drawing correct Lewis structures. So the first step is to count the total number of valence electrons, those outermost electrons. So for ozone, we have three oxygens, and each oxygen, it's in group 16, 
And so it has six valence electrons. We covered counting valence electrons um, or determining the number of valence electrons of an atom in a previous video. So make sure to review that if needed. So each oxygen has six valence electrons. So we have a total of 18 valence electrons to work with here. I did three times six is 18. You're gonna place the least electronegative atom in the center. And I will teach you about electronegativity in a later video. So stay tuned for that. Another thing to make note is that hydrogen always has to be an outside atom. So hydrogen can never be in the center of the molecule because it can only form one bond. So just as a note, hydrogen has to be on the outside, even if it's not as electronegative. So in this case, it doesn't matter because they're all oxygens. So I'm just gonna put them in a row. I have oxygen, oxygen, and oxygen here. And then the third step is to draw the single bonds connecting those atoms in the skeleton. So I call this the skeleton structure here at this point because we're just connecting them together with single bonds. And remember each single bond is two electrons. So right now I have drawn one, two, three, four electrons. 18 minus four is 14. I have 14 valence electrons left over at this point as I'm deriving the structure. So I'll keep coming back to this, but it's important to always count the total number of valence electrons. And when you draw your Lewis structure, you have exactly that number of valence electrons drawn in, no more and no less. Four, distribute. the remaining lone pairs to the outer atoms. So you focus on completing the outer atoms octet first before you even look at the central atom. So the central atom is this one here. These are the outer atoms. So in step four, we complete the octet of the outside atoms first. So right now this oxygen has two electrons. And so it will need three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So once again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the other one will also need two or three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because that single bond counted. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So right now as it stands, I have drawn one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I've drawn 16 electrons. But I have 18 to work with here. So let's go on to step five. Step five is if any electrons remain, place them on the central atom. So 
So now in step five, you can focus on the central atom. We do have two that are left over. Sometimes we don't, so always double check. But in this case, we do, and we will put them on the central atom. And it's okay if you put them here or here, just don't put them in front of the bonding electrons. Now step six, save this one for last. Sometimes we need it, sometimes we don't. So this one is if a central atom does not have an octet, share electrons between an outer atom and central atom to make a double or triple bond. So step six, check the central atom. Right now, the central atom has one, two, three, four, five, six. It doesn't have an octet. So now we have to share electrons between one of the outside atoms and the central atom to make a double or triple bond. And it doesn't matter which one you choose because they're both oxygens. And we won't go through it in this course here, but if you take any more chemistry courses, you'll learn a concept called resonance. And so, um, but for right now, just take from one or the other. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this lone pair and I'm gonna turn it from non-bonding to bonding. So I'm gonna like move them in between here and make bonding electrons. So I'm gonna erase this and put another line here. They're gonna share now. And then I'm gonna to count to make sure my oxygen atoms all have an octet. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this one's good. And the central one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're good there. And the third one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're all good there. Once again, each line represents two electrons. So don't forget about that. Also, don't stress if you chose this lone pair and made it into a double bond or this one. It doesn't matter because electrons actually are moving throughout. It's very dynamic. Right now, we just have a snapshot picture of what the Lewis structure looks like. The electrons are actually quite dynamic in reality. Also, if you had drawn, for example, this here, that would have also been just fine because you borrowed from this oxygen atom on here. Once again, you would learn in a later chemistry class that these are resonance structures, so they're the same. And there you go. So once again, when you're doing Lewis structures, you'll wanna utilize these guidelines, follow them step-by-step, step. don't try to skip. Sometimes I'll see students try to guess if there's double or triple bonds, don't guess. Follow these steps and you'll be safe then. All right, let's practice this together utilizing those guidelines. So first step is to count the total number of valence electrons. So carbon is four, hydrogen is one. So we have four plus four times one is equal to eight valence electrons. The second step is to place the least electronegative atom in the center. But in this case here, I mean, technically hydrogen is less electronegative, but it can never be a central atom. So carbon has to be in the center. And then the third step is to draw the single bonds connecting those atoms in the skeleton. And right now we've drawn one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've used all of our electrons. The fourth step is to distribute the remaining lone pairs to the outer atoms, but we have nothing remaining. 
So we can skip that one. Step five, if any electrons remain, place them on the central atom. We don't have that either. And then step six, if the central atom doesn't have an octet, share electrons between an outer atom and central atom to make a double or triple bond. Carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it is all good. This is the Lewis structure for methane, CH4. So sometimes you don't utilize each step, but it's important to check to make sure that, that it's okay to move on. Once again, these are the examples we saw earlier in the video. Um, I prefer that if you have bonding electrons, to show them as lines. And then non-bonding electrons will stay as individual electrons there, lone pairs. So go ahead, pause the video, utilize the guidelines, the rules to draw the Lewis structure for phosphorus trichloride, and then check your work with me when you're done. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and determine the number, total number of valence electrons. So first step, valence electrons, we have phosphorus, which has five, and then we have chlorine, or yeah, chlorine, which is seven. So fluorine is five plus there's three chlorines, each giving us seven. So we have 21 plus five, which is 26 valence electrons to work with. No more, no less. The second step is to place the least electronegative atom in the center, which in this case will be phosphorus. Once again, I'll go over electronegativity in a later video. So. Hold on tight with that one, but for right now, I'll let you know phosphorus is your central atom. And then what you'll wanna do is third step, draw the single bonds connecting them together as a skeleton. And remember each of those lines is two electrons. So we've used one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. So we have 20 left. Step four, distribute the remaining lone pairs to the outer atoms. So the outside atoms are the chlorines, not the phosphorus. Phosphorus is in the middle, so it's a central atom. So we will complete the chlorine's octet first. So this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because remember, we count these as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And do the same for the other ones. And when I count all these electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So I've drawn 24 electrons. I have 26, so step five. If any electrons remain, place them on the central atom. And place them on the other side there. And then in step six, if a central atom does not have an octet, share electrons between an outer atom and central atom to make a double or triple bond. So phosphorus, let's count its electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It has an octet, it's happy, so are the chlorine. So we're all good, no double or triple bonds needed for this structure here. So as a reminder, a double bond occurs when atoms share two pairs of electrons, so four electrons total. It forms when there's not enough electrons to complete the octet for the central atom. And the same thing for a triple bond. The triple bonds share three pairs of electrons, giving you a total of six electrons shared. And once again, they form when there's not just enough electrons to complete the octet of the central atom. All right, go ahead, try this structure here, carbon dioxide, pause the video and then check your work with me when you're done. 
All right, step one, let's count the total number of valence electrons. So for carbon, we have four. And for oxygen, we have each of them gives us six. So we have four plus two times six here. <clears throat> and so we have 12 plus four, which is 16 valence electrons that we're working with. We then place the central least electronegative atom in the center. Carbon is less electronegative than oxygen. We'll learn in a later video. And then draw the single bonds connecting these atoms in the skeleton. So right now I've drawn one, two, three, four electrons. I have 12 left. Step four, distribute the remaining lone pairs to the outer atoms. So complete oxygen's octet first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight times two is 16. So I've used all of my electrons here. Oxygens are happy, but is carbon? No, it only has one, two, three, four. So step five, if any electrons remain, place them on the central atom. We don't have any electrons left over. So you don't wanna go above 16. Um, we'll have to go to step six. If a central atom does not have an octet, like carbon here, share electrons between an outer atom and central atom to make a double or triple bond. So carbon needs four more electrons. And so we can borrow from here and we can also borrow from this side as well. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say, you're gonna have to share now, turn those non-bonding into bonding electrons. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side as well. They're gonna to have to share. And let's count. So now carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So carbon's happy. Oxygen is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's good. And let's make sure we have a total of 16, no more, no less. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we're good. So you can always double check your work to make sure you're confident in what you've drawn. Um, in this case, all the atoms have an octet. We use 16 electrons only to draw this Lewis structure confidently. So we've been doing examples of just covalent compounds, but what about those polyatomic ions? So let's draw the Lewis structure for the carbonate polyatomic ion. You can pause the video, try to do it on your own first, see how far you get, um, and then check your work with me when you're done. Now the trick to counting the total number of valence electrons when there's a charge, remember that electrons have, are negative, right? And so if you have a negative charge, then you're gonna add that to the number of electrons because it's already negative. So let's do that together. So carbon gives me four valence electrons. Each oxygen gives me six, ele six valence electrons. Because we're adding up electrons, that negative two, we actually add to the total number of valence electrons. And so when we add that all together, we get 24 valence electrons to work with. No more and no less. We're gonna place the least electronegative atom in the center, which is carbon. And then draw the single bonds connecting these atoms in the skeleton. We've used six so far. And then step four, Complete the outside atoms octets. Don't worry about carbon just yet. So each oxygen has an octet. How much have we drawn? Like how many electrons? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. We've drawn 24. So be careful. Step five says if any electrons remain, place them on the central atom. 
but we don't have any extra leftovers. So do not be tempted to add electrons to satisfy, satisfy carbon's octet because you do not have any more electrons to draw in. So we have to skip step five and then go to step six, which states if the central atom doesn't have an octet, share electrons between an outer atom and the central atom to make a double or triple bond. So carbon only needs two more electrons. It can borrow from any of the oxygens. It doesn't matter which one you choose. Remember that's called resonance structures. We're not covering that in this class. But like I said, don't stress out if you draw the double bond here and then your friend draws it on the other side, it's the same thing. So I'm just gonna borrow from the top oxygen here. And so I'm gonna take those two electrons. They didn't disappear. They went from non-bonding to bonding. They went in between the two. And so now carbon has an octet. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Same for that one. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So everyone has an octet. We've only drawn 24 valence electrons, so we're all good. And once again, don't worry, this double bond could be here, it could have been here, it could have been over here. It doesn't matter which oxygen you choose. And this is the Lewis structure for carbonate. All right, thank you for watching. And as always, email me with any questions.